Hi everyone. I hope you're well and looking forward to the holiday season, which is just approaching so quickly. It will be a little different this year, but we definitely all earned a break. I think we all need some good news at this time of year and at this stage in the pandemic, don't you? So today I'll be covering great news from a few of our schools, and then I'll continue with others in future videos. Let's start with our School of Computing and Academic Studies, where our Digital Technology Supercluster Project, Athena Pathways, is helping more Canadian women see the potential of tech sector and artificial intelligence. BCIT Computing Instructor has created an Applied AI for Non-Programmers course to help people from outside of computer science understand and leverage AI. This will help bring the problem-solving benefits of AI into new fields and areas. Thank you to faculty member Maryam Cesarte for creating new opportunities for BCIT learners through this new program. Now over in the School of Energy, one of the newest faculty members in Power Engineering, Suzanne Doyen, is making a big difference for students, faculty, and staff. Suzanne is making her presence felt in a big and positive way. She led the development of the approved Go Forward plan for both the operational and maintenance spaces for power engineering. This includes boiler house, machine shop, welding shop, and maintenance shop. Suzanne has lots of help from her colleagues, but she was a driving force. Thank you all. Another great story is the Virtual Pulse Supercluster. The project team has now delivered its first of 26 training modules for healthcare professionals across Canada and the US. This 15-month, $3.2 million project brings together the School of Health Sciences, the Learning and Teaching Center, Technology Training Associates, Unity, Animism Studios, and CAE Healthcare to address the growing demand for virtual simulations due to the impact of COVID-19. Virtual Pulse's award-winning reality simulations recreate real-life situations that encourage clinical decision-making in an effective and safe learning environment. The project team is on track to develop two of these modules per month, including COVID-19-related and other scenarios. These simulated experiences will be used here at BCIT and licensed to other organizations through commercialization efforts, reaching tens of thousands of healthcare professionals. Over in BCIT's School of Transportation, 16 Honda Foundation students will be going out on practicums at local Honda and Acura dealerships, learning the various aspects and operations in a dealership environment while again practicing safe COVID protocols. We're planning similar placements in the spring through our Toyota Foundation program. It's great to see BCIT students still have access to the hands-on, practical, and real-world experience we are known for while staying safe. Finally for today, I wanted to acknowledge faculty member Jody Patterson, who is program head for BCIT's bachelor degree in architectural science for her introduction of a new application. Miro Whiteboard, which allows students to draw and work on a virtual whiteboard at the same time. Recently, she's had students from four different countries working together on projects, just as they would in a real-world setting. This is a great example, again, of bringing collaboration and teamwork to life through technology. Thank you, Jody. And now let's learn about another unique program happening here at BCIT, our Industrial Network Cybersecurity Program currently being delivered to students in a blended model through the School of Energy and the School of Computing and Academic Studies. Cybersecurity is about protecting people, processes, and technology that are used in an organization and putting the systems in place to ensure that the communication and the use of the technology, all of that stuff is protected. So in, the, uh, in, in around 2005, uh, a, uh, a, a piece of malware or virus was, uh, was circulated on a USB key uh, called Stuxnet and uh, compromised a programmable logic controller. That PLC device is a, a device that operated some centrifuges and is commonly used in industry. There might be one in our elevator here. 
that was a turning point uh, for uh, industry to realize that they needed to provide some sort of security for industrial devices. There are no people really trained in industrial cybersecurity except when a company does it themselves. And so when we designed the program, we designed the program based on wide consultation with industry. So our delivery for our program is blended. What I mean by that is that if you're in the first term of our program, then it's online only. If you're in the third term of our program, uh, then you are expected to be on campus for some labs that are critical to some core competencies that we need you to learn in order to be successful in the program. There are no other programs that we've found in Canada, North America, or even the world that are like this particular program. So we're trying to bridge that divide by having individuals that are specialists in information technology as it applies to, uh, to networks that include operational technology. The operational technology involves the devices and processes that are used to affect the real world. So there are things that turn things on and turn things off to move items from place to place. We need to be able to provide security to an organization even if the systems there are vulnerable to attack. The Spartan Centre is a representative example of the type of environment that our graduates from our program are going to find themselves working. It's uh, really a good example of an industrial process that includes both information technology and operational technology and is similar in many ways to careers that they may find themselves in water distribution systems, in electrical generation, uh, power transmission systems and the likes. The online environment has been beneficial both to the students and to me as an instructor. Students that would normally sit at the back of a class and not ask questions are much more willing to send me a chat message and I, I really like that as, a, as an instructor. What surprised me is that most students seem to actually enjoy the online learning model. They like to have the flexibility and freedom in their schedule. Furthermore to that, there's things that you can actually do in terms of an online delivery that are a little bit more difficult to do in a classroom delivery. The types of media that you can include now in your courses. And so it makes a more rich learning experience. And I'd have to say that's, that's one of the greatest benefits that I have seen so far. The lab that we're developing right now is unique in that it includes both operational technology and information technology as you'd find in an industrial environment. It's based on game theory. Um, we have 20 students in the lab and therefore five teams of four. And at the top of every one of these workbenches is a Fisher Techniques simulated factory and it simulates the production of tires. The students are responsible for maintaining secure control of the factory and trying to protect it from any attacks from outsiders, specifically the other teams in the room. At the same time, they're actually attacking other Fisher Techniques simulated factories on other benches to try and score points during a capture of the flag exercise. We're actually very proud of, of BCIT and, and the BCIT community for, for continuing to be at the forefront of technological training and providing this type of training to our industrial partners. Any student going through this program will have a skill set that, that goes beyond what is needed and I, I believe very strongly that they will uh, not only uh, do well, they'll exceed when they get out into industry.